Now, you offered to explain Jizya real quick. Is there, is, there a short, is there a short version of it? Sure. Okay, what's Jizya in a, in a nutshell? Excellent. So, as a Muslim, we do believe that we have rules and regulations that Allah has ordained upon us, mm -hmm. and we do not enforce our religious practices on others. Right? So, we have zakat, for example, right? As a Muslim, living in the Muslim state, we have zakat. Zakat goes into Baytul Mal. You know what Baytul Mal is? What's that? I'm here to help you, bro. No problem. I'm your, I'm your shaykh, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the Muslim government has what kind of like what you would consider treasure, right? And in Islamic form of governments, we don't have taxes. So all you libertarians become Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. So, what we do have is we have zakat that comes in from Muslims. That is a religious obligation. And that goes into Baytul Mal, and there are certain categories of people and, and projects that that goes toward, which are lined out in the Quran and the entire book of on it. Now, we don't enforce that on non Muslims, right? Like here in America, for example, you pay taxes, I pay taxes, right? Mm -hmm. But as under a Muslim Khilafah, we don't have taxes. How does the government get that revenue from Muslims? They get it through zakat. If we were to enforce zakat on non-Muslims, then this would be putting a religious obligation on Muslims on them, and we don't want to infringe on their religious rights. So they have jizya. Jizya is only given when they enjoy benefits from the Islamic government, meaning protection, police service, whatever else. Why well, you look confused? You know, all up in the sky. I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about what thinking, you just think, said. Think, think, ponder upon it, bro. I got you. So jizya is their paying into the Islamic government's functions for the services they receive. For example, in America, you pay taxes, right? Uh -huh. I don't know which state you're in, depending how much taxes you pay, but in California, we pay a lot of taxes, right? But the government says, hey, you pay your taxes, we give you police service, we give you roads, we give you the military, we give you these protections, right? Now, as a non-Muslim living under Muslim rule, you will get those benefits, and as you get those benefits, you will pay into the system, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if we didn't, then it would be a, a hardship that would be borne only by the Muslims who would be paying zakat, and non-Muslims would not be paying anything to the government's function. If, and as it has been during times of Islamic history, that those uh, functions are not delivered, jizya is not taken. There have been times, like during the time of Umar al-Khattab, where jizya was returned, right? So this is their taxes that they pay into the services they receive which I think you would think is fair. Uh, yeah, well, the, 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 re the reason I was, I was uh, the, the, the reason, go ahead. a little inquisitive there, so I was thinking, um, so Muhammad said, my livelihood, is, my livelihood is under the shade of my spear, and he who disobeys my orders will be humiliated by paying jizya. And so he describes it as, as humiliation. So Muhammad describes it as humiliation. One second, I just wanted to quote Ibn Kathir on, on, the, on the, uh, the same issue. So Ibn Kathir, paying jizya... Which ayah are we looking at? Uh, this would be on 929. Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Allah said, until they pay the jizya, if they do not choose to embrace Islam with willing submission, in defeat and subservience, and feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma or elevate them above Muslims, for they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. Sure. Muslim recorded from Abu Hurairah that the Prophet said, Do not initiate the Salam to the Jews and Christians, and if you meet any of them in a road, force them to its narrowest alley. Sure. And then he goes on to, I know the Pact of Umar is, is uh, disputed as far as whether that was actually from Umar. Uh, Thanks. But he goes on to quote the Pact of Umar. The one where he gives the conditions of, uh, for the Dimi contract. Okay. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, you're mentioning a lot of things and you're kind of going forward instead of addressing well, the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the only issue there was, you're portraying it as, hey, it's just payment for services. Whereas they're describing it as, you're sure. humiliated, you're disgraced, sure. you're belittled. If you see a Christian or a Jew, shove them there, shove them that, down this alley. That's got nothing to do with jizya itself, but we'll, we'll talk about that as well. First thing, can I look at the hadith now? Yes. That you're trying to so uh, frequently try to get over? Maybe <laughs> like, uh, it's famous websites. Man. You gotta buy yourself some books. This is bro. directly from the Darus <laughs> Salaam edition <laughs> of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of Sahih al Bukhari. What you're looking up where? This, this, this is not from Darus Salaam. That's a lie. 
Oh, 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 oh. This here is not Dar es Salaam. I Ibn personally Kathir. guarantee you. Ibn no, 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 that's not a big thing. Oh, okay, that's okay. Sahih. That's Sahih so, Bukhari. Okay. Excellent, Bukhari. Okay. 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 Let's clarify that because you were pointing at Ibn Kathir, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, when I quoted Ibn Kathir, I quoted Muhammad gotcha. first. Gotcha. So, now let's look at the hadith. Ju'ila rizqi taht al Right? So, this is what you are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the rizq of Rasulullah under the, the sword, right? Now, you know about Kumus, I'm assuming. No, what's that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can translate. So, that's Muhammad's livelihood. I'm getting right? there. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, right? Uh, and, and see, you, you've, you've cut this for some reason, so we don't have... Because that, that's the quotation. I okay, but, 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 there, but there's a reference here with the one there. Which we don't know what it says. Because you've cut I can it. look it up. Okay, cool. Um, so, the livelihood of Rasulullah is what's called the Khumas. This doesn't come from Jizya. Mm -hmm. okay? That's the first thing you misunderstood the hadith, right? Um, this is why we have an wow here to show the, a different subject that's coming up. Okay? The livelihood of Rasulullah is, does not come from Ghanima, it does not come from Zakat, it does not come from Sadaqah, it comes from what's called the Khumas. The Khumas would be that if there is a battle, from the spoils of the war itself, not the jizya later, from the spoils of the war, you would take one fifth of that to be given to Rasulullah so he could then spend it upon the people and upon his expenses and so on. Right? So you misunderstood the hadith first off by thinking this is talking about jizya, right? Second, he does say jizya. I know, but I didn't. I didn't believe the first part was about jizya. The second part. Okay. No, you said the livelihood of Rasulullah comes from jizya, which is on tape. No, 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 no. I quoted it. You didn't say that. Well, we got it on my tape. livelihood is under the shade of my spear, and right. he who disobeys my right. orders will be humiliated by paying jizya. The, the, th the thing was, Ooh. you're portraying jizya as, hey, you know, this is this it happy is. fun money to take care of you. I didn't say happy he says fun. He humiliated money. by paying jizya. That's what I was asking about. Sure. Let me explain it, bro. Take it easy. <laughs> First thing that you need to clarify for your audience mm -hmm. is the livelihood of Rasulullah Sallam does not come from jizya. Are we clear on that? Now you look confused. You just said you didn't say that, but it's all right. We got you, bro. That's what we're here for. <laughs> we got you. Okay. So, the livelihood of Rasulullah, this is the problem with people who don't have enough knowledge to look up references. They take one hadith or one ayah and then they think they know. But I'm glad you're here because we're here to teach you. We're here to wash your misconceptions out. So, the livelihood of Rasulullah comes from what's called Khumas. Right? That's why you have books like Fat Khalbari. Books like of hadith are not studied in silos, right? This is when you look at all the Majmu al Ahadith and you look at it, right? This and the wow is not to show regarding livelihood. This is then talking about those that disobey the Prophet after the battle, right? Because jizya is only on those that are there. Now, as I said, if Muslims, and we'll look at Ibn Kathir in a second now, right? If Muslims were paying zakat, right? And the non Muslims were not paying anything, right? Would you agree that that would not be fair? Uh, in, in, a, in a situation where people are, are benefiting from the arrangement. Right, we already mentioned that, right? So, if you are under protection of the Islamic State, uh -huh. right? The defense, police, roads, all those services are being given. Muslims are paying zakat. Okay? Non-Muslims are not paying anything. Would you consider that fair? None of that is the point. The, point, the point is, it is, is the jizya point. is the humiliation. It, it is the point. Jizya is the humiliation. It is the point, if you would listen. Right? So you want to jump because you know it's going to become clear, but I'm not going to let you jump. You're going to be in your place, son. So here, you, I'm asking you a question. In the Islamic Khilafah, you have Muslims and non-Muslims. You got Muslims paying zakat. Zakat is going to Baytul Mal, which you didn't look up any of those ahadith because you didn't really want to learn. You just wanted to make this video, but I got it. No need to, no no need to keep insulting. No, no, I'm not insulting. I brought that's this not, to you that's not to an let insult. you explain. That is not an insult. Right? That is letting you know what you did and how we're going to clarify it, right? So, if you look at the ahadith about zakat, for example, which you didn't look up that vow for some reason, right? Because then you would see that the Muslim, is, does, he humbles himself, right? Willingly, right? By paying zakat, right or wrong, right? So when you pay zakat, and that money goes into the system, mm -hmm. and then from Yatam and Masakin and even non-Muslims, like that, you know, you, you can give zakat to as you look at the condition given in the Quran, and a non-Muslim living there, in that society of not paying any of that, would you find that to be fair? No, you should uh, you should be required to. Excellent. Again, no, excellent, excellent. None excellent. of that's the issue. It's, it the, is it's, the, issue. it's the humiliation issue. It is the issue. issue if you you wouldn't say that Muslims are humiliated by paying zakat. I, I, I would say that we are humble but willing. Humiliated. 
explaining. Okay. There's a difference, right? Mm -hmm. If if I pay taxes willingly, right, then I am humbled by having to pay taxes. If I choose not to, and the government forces me to pay taxes, I am humiliated by them forcefully taking it from me. Correct? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I got you. So, when you're living in a Muslim Khilafah, and the Muslim pays zakat willing, right? They humble themselves. If not, and this is where you're missing, right? In the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when the Muslims stopped paying zakat, you know about this? Ah, uh, son, you don't watch my videos. Wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. You don't watch wait, my videos. Wait, go over that again? In the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu Oh, okay, yeah, when there, when there was the, 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 uh, the apostasy war. So there was the Rinda war said, against Hussein yeah. al-Khaddab, but they, that was yeah. a different issue. They refused but to pay zakat, and no, Abu Bakr no. said, if they refuse to give me even a, a rope that they used to give excellent, Muhammad, excellent. I'm coming to fight. We Muhammad. will humiliate them by taking it from them. Right? Mm -hmm. Even though those were people who made salah, who prayed, who said they were Muslim. So what is the humiliation is they were forced then, because they weren't willingly given. Right? So here in the hadith, it clarifies that as well. As a Muslim, I'm not humiliated with zakat because I pay zakat willingly. If I do not, then the khilafah will force me and humiliate me by forcefully taking zakat because that is the haq, that is the right of the poor. But Ahlul Dhimma, that would not be paying, then they would be forced to pay the jizya because it would not be fair as you have already agreed. So that is the humiliation. So when, when Ibn Kathir says, uh, so, so let's get to Ibn Kathir. Let me he just, says paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. So, uh, what website is this? You and your website. Hey, if you had told me, I would have brought Ibn Kathir's actual book to volume. Yeah. This, 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 this is the same as Darussalam. This is Darussalam print? No, no, no. That's, uh, I believe it's Yusuf Esni's website. Yusuf Esni's Okay, anyway. No, no, no. So I, let's go. Okay. That's his so, so go ahead. Where were you? Um, just start from the beginning. Until they do not choose to embrace Islam. With willing submission. So what does this show? Right? What does it say? That if they came with willing... That's just quoting 929. Right, so, so that's what I'm telling you the ayah, right? So what, is, what, is, what, is, uh, what is the meaning here? Allah said, until they pay the jizya, if they do not choose to embrace Islam, the next line, with willing submission, it defines, it defines willing submission as in defeat and subservience. Exactly. So what does that mean? If you are not going to be willingly submitting, then you will be defeated and no doubt made subservient. That's a humiliation, is it not? Uh, that's not what that's saying at all. Okay, so can you read? He's commenting. He's commenting. No, 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 no. Read the word okay. instead of giving your interpretation. You're not a big appeal. Okay. Paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. He doesn't you say it. He doesn't, I started at the very beginning. Okay. Okay. Paying jizya. This, this is not from the interpretation. This is your ignorance again. May Allah give you some knowledge. This, this, this is an example because the Dar es Salaam will have the exact same thing. You would say it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. in learning about it. It is Dar es Salaam, right? What I'm trying to explain to you, these are titles that have been put in that are not in the actual Tafsir of Nikati. They have them right there. Those are the titles. That's what I'm trying to explain. This is, if you get Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir does not put these in. Okay. Okay. These are put in to give you an idea of where you are. Okay. So that's not the words of Ibn Kathir. I have Tafsir Ibn Kathir in many different versions. I have scans of manuscripts. I'm just trying to help you understand. This here is a title put in because the way Ibn Kathir works, it doesn't go ayah by ayah, right? It takes a sort of chapter. So the printer, whoever put this in, they put that in. Here, Allah says is where Ibn Kathir begins, which is the ayah. When you read the ayah, which you were skipping earlier, is the willing submission. I never skipped it earlier. Let's, let's read it. Read it from the beginning. Allah said, yes. until they pay the jizya, yes. if they do not choose to embrace Islam. Right? Notice, it doesn't. Keep going, if they keep do going. not choose to embrace Islam right. with willing submission, there you go. In defeat and subservience. Exactly. So he's describing willing submission as defeat and subservience. No. <laughs> That's his commentary. That's the Quran. That's the Quran. That's his commentary. You poor soul. I feel bad for you. With willing submission is is what they should do. 
And now Ibn Kathir is explaining that when they do not, that means that they will be defeated in defeat and, and submissiveness is then when you talk about the humiliation, when they're subdued because they didn't willingly submit. You didn't understand Ibn Kathir. No, the, Go ahead. Now no, read it again. The, 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 the verse of the Quran says, willing until submission. Until they pay the jizya with willing submission right. so and feel themselves right. subdued. Right. So That's what the Quran says. It doesn't say until they pay the jizya with willing submission and if they find, then they will feel themselves subdued. None of that. Let me explain it again to you, right? Okay. So the first option is for them to become Muslim. Okay. Willingly they accept, right? If they do not, then they will pay the jizya, right? If they are, they, they do not do it in a way of willingness, if they do not willingly accept Islam, they do not accept this, then this is the defeat and submission, the jizya that they will have to be forced to pay. Okay? So that is, and as I explained, in America, for example, if you, David Wood, say, FIRS, not that you would use those kind of words, right? I'm not paying my taxes, right? And then the tax IRS will say, oh yes you are, and we're going to take you to court, and we're going to humiliate you, we're going to put you on trial, we'll send you to jail if you have to, we will make you pay those taxes, because you're not going to do it willingly. So are you not humiliated? Oh, I didn't want to pay. Um, yeah, I'm just saying so that's, 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 that's what this is saying. Okay. Because notice, I mean, he goes on, he goes on right. to... He's talking about the humiliation app from those that do not willingly submit. Go ahead. Wow, not what this is saying at all. <laughs> this is uh wait so so let me let me let me let me get this straight so when he goes on here and he says read the ayah before you go <laughs> the word that he quotes and feel themselves subdued so what, what is this to see off now sorry 929 no no of them being subdued he's explaining the, 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 the them being subdued that's the tafsir he's making now but what does it mean to be subdued okay what? Disgraced, humiliated, and belittled. That, that's therefore, what means subdued, right? Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dima. Notice it doesn't sure. say people of the Dima who rebelled and so on. But, but, so but, but, therefore, but, 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 Muslims again, are not again, allowed again. to no, no, honor no, no, the people of the Dima. Context. Okay. Context. Hold on. Context. What you're doing is you're, the ayah is talking about those that fought did not willingly submit, did not become Muslim, and had to be subdued. So that's the Ahlul Dhimma you're talking about. Ahlul Dhimma have different categories, right? Just because he doesn't say, clarify because of the context, don't assume he's talking about something else. Ahlul Dhimma, for example, those that are given their harbi, for example, those that were actually fighting you, they are those that are not harbi, that, that were those that supported you, you know about this, right? There's a book, try to get it. It's called Ahkam Ahlul Dhimma Ibn al Okay, It explains all the different things okay? so that you can be more educated with your response. Go ahead. So, when, when he goes on to say, quotes Muhammad, do not initiate the salam to the Jews and Christians. And if you meet any of them sure. in a road, force them to its narrowest alley. Sure. You're saying that only applies to rebels, not to just Jews and no, Christians that in general. Not. Let, let me explain that. As you know, that there are times when you can say salam to a non-Muslim. For example, in the Quran, when it says the people of Jahl, ignorance come, Kuru salam, right? That hadith, because you don't know context again, is when the Yahud, there were Jews in Medina, that would say, Sam alayk, they would say, may death and, 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 and poison and things be upon you. You know the hadith? It says Jews and Christians. But I'm telling you the context of the hadith itself, okay? So, when they used to do this, in when a hadith. Death be upon you or something yes. like that? Yeah, you know about the hadith or you know it? You know about it? You don't know. Yeah, the one where, where, where they, they, were, they were slurring something? They were slurring yeah, something. Exactly. So they're actually saying, you do know yeah, about it. You're just trying to hide it. I got you. So Aisha radiyanha, she responded. She said, may death be upon you. And she went off on them. Rasulullah said, alayhi bi It's upon you. Don't don't get. Just say wa alayhi. Don't initiate the salam. Because when you do, then they may respond to you with something that is disgraceful. Right? So just tell them wa alayhi. Don't say wa alaykum as salam, don't get, don't get upset. In Tafsir ibn Kathir, for example, or in Fath al-Bari, there are different opinions among scholars. Some of them said, if the dhimmi is such, or a person, that they do not curse you, you are allowed to initiate the salam. Other ulema said, no, because of the fear of that changing things, you should keep the salam for the Muslim, this is the greeting for Muslims, which I agree with, right? And if a non-Muslim does greet you, you say wa alaykum. If you tell me salam alaykum, I will say wa alaykum. If you wish peace for me, I will wish it for you. If you wish death for me, then I'll say wa alaykum. 
I just told you the I just told you the hadith in its full context. The scheme. Right? <laughs> like like you get proven wrong all these times, but you I'm just clarifying. I want I want, it. I want your version of Islam on it's record. Not, it's not my version. It is, I didn't make up the hadith for Uthman. You look up the hadith, right? What does Uthman say? Qul wa alaykum. Say, what do you say? Wa alaykum. So even as a dhimmi, even, uh, you're not a dhimmi because you're not living in the Arab anyway, but as a non-Muslim, if you come to me and you say, Assalamu alaykum with good intent, I will say, Wa alaykum. If you wish salam for me, I wish salam for you. But if you try to curse me with those words, then I will say, Wa alaykum, and whatever you wish for me will come back to you. What, what about the hadith where Ibn Umar, uh, someone gives him the salam, he says salam, and then he goes away, and then it was told to him, that, that was a Jew or something like this, and he comes back and he says, "Give me back my, give me back my greeting." Sure. I'll have to look it up. Oh, then look it up and then we'll look at it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, because context, you, you, uh, you've already proven that you always take things out of context. Maybe out, out of mistake. I'm not saying about it intentionally. So I want to see the hadith. So we can explain it. Okay. This hadith about saying salam, you can look it up on Islam QA, whatever that's the website you're familiar with, and it talks about. The condition where you can say wa alaykum as salam and, and which ulema take opinion. And if not, as I said, I have Fath al Bari, the Sharif Bukhari, the Hajjat, he explains it as well, so you can open your mind. So, now, when you talk about jizya, if you're looking at it just from the perspective of one ayah, one hadith, this is, this is where you misunderstand the full concept, right? But when you look at it from the full context of how it's implemented, right? In, in implementation, if you are non-Muslim, living in a Muslim land, enjoying the services provided to you by the Islamic government, right? in response for those services, you pay into the system, right? Me as a Muslim, I pay zakat, you pay jizya. Do you see any problem with that? I'm glad. I'm glad you don't. So, okay. No problem with jizya. Zakallah khair. Next. Oh, problem with jizya. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just said you don't. I just said I'm not seeing any of that in the, the source. But what do you think about so, the, so the me, pack? Me, what do you think me, about the me, pack? Well, Omar. Let me let me explain that. Okay. Regarding when you say you're not seeing that, which book of fiqh of jizya have you studied? I'm just I'm just no, talking no, about no, the passage no, no. here. I'm explaining. This, if right? if you can't hold understand, on, hold if you go to the Quran on, on, and you can't understand it, and you go to the commentary and you can't understand it, and you go to the hadith and you can't understand it, it just seems like this is not able to be understood. I, I got you. When you talk about learning law, you're talking about Islamic law, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? You do not say, as David, that you just pick up one book of law from anywhere and then you will have your own understanding. Right? You are not reading a book of implementation of, of, of Jezia. Right? Or not. Right? What you're doing is you found these verses, not randomly, you found them. Here's a verse. Right? But how, how did you get Let to the verse? Let me look up Ibn Kathir. Right? How, how did you get to the verse? Reading the Quran. You were just reading the Quran randomly and the ayah came? I have entire Qurans highlighted all the way through. Uh, tell me the truth. Were you just randomly reading the Quran and that ayah came? Or were you I saw looking? this long before I ever actually read through the entire Quran. So, what you did is you found a verse that you found that you could use to be problematic. And then you look, hold, hold on, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, right? Then you went and looked it up to try to make this attack on Islam. What you should have done is gone to a book that talks about the implementation of Islamic law. And from the Quran and from Sahih Ahadith, they would have brought you the Majmu'ah, all of them, to show how Jazia works. But you had an intention to take a jab instead of not. So I'll tell you what, again, we have a book, I'm making an offer here. We have a book called Zadul Mustaqim, the fiqh book, that brings then the evidences from the Quran and Sahih Ahadith and Akhwar al-Sahaba and the different Malahir. We are going through it. Watch the videos. From the beginning, with Tahara, Salah, Siyam, we will go over Jizya. We will go over Jihad, Qital, Offensive, Defensive, all of that, right? With not just one ayah, but looking at all of the ayahs, looking at all of the ahadith, and the scholarly deduction of ulema, so you can learn. Now, I am going to prove that everything you just said is complete nonsense. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> with Ibn Kathir. So, according to Sheikh Uthman, According to Sheikh Uthman. I like how you're getting all dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get with it. Go, girl. According to Sheikh. I never called this man a girl. Uh, I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying, go, girl. I'm not saying you're a girl. All right. So, 
Do not initiate the salam to the Jews and Christians, and if you meet any of them in a robe, force them to its narrowest alley. Sheikh Uthman said here in the presence of everyone on video that this is only referring to the people who refuse to pay the jizya, and therefore things had to get harsher for them. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. You made a point. Hold on, hold on. First thing, on the video, you just lied upon me. So let me, I didn't, I told you that hadith about the salam was not in reference to jizya. That hadith, I gave you the full version, but you ignored that, right? Instead, yeah, but I asked you, on, you, you wouldn't, on, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that with, with even if I was a dhimmi. I told you with a dhimmi, a rare dhimmi, that hadith does not mention dhimmiya. You are saying that I said this is about the dhimmi, and I, on video... Ibn Kathir said it's about the dhimmi. No, he didn't. He was explaining to you the context about the relationship with the dhimmiya. He did not say that it has to be the dhimmi. But you said this is right? about the people who have refused to pay jizya, so that would, that would be the context. Of... I did not. No, no, no. You're oh, saying bro. that, that oh, his oh, commentary oh, here. No, oh, I'm not saying that hadith. Let I'm let saying me, if you're I'll saying explain. that this is about people who have refused to pay the jizya, and he quotes it, then that means he would be in that context. Unless you're saying he's wrong and, and, and quoting this out of let place. Let me explain this to you a third time. Okay. But if you could actually... Right now, this ayah was talking about those that are subdued. Okay. Past that, Ibn Kathir is giving you general context. Okay. Right? Okay. Now, I made it very clear that this hadith was not about a dhimmiya, but general, and I gave you the reference about the hadith of Aisha radhi huh? yep. and you ignored that. I'm fine. No, I'm fine no, no, with that. No, 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 no. no, no. I now, got that. Now, I thought you were now. also applying it. I stand corrected, but he, Ibn Kathir is still going to correct you. That, that, that few minutes of him saying that, that he's going to destroy everything I said, he we stands corrected. We didn't get to it. All right. This is why the leader of the faithful, Umar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, demanded his well-known conditions be met by the Christians. These conditions that ensured their continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace. So ongoing humiliation, degradation, and disgrace. The scholars of Hadith narrated from Abdur Rahman that he said, I recorded for Umar bin al-Khattab, May Allah be pleased with him. In terms of the treaty of peace he conducted with the Christians of Asham. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, this is a document to the servant of Allah, Umar. This is the document that they were required to have, uh, have for the agreement. This is a document to the servant of Allah, Umar, the leader of the faithful, from the Christians of such and such city. When you Muslims came to us, we requested safety for our ourselves, children, property, and followers of our religion. So they're requesting, they're requesting safety. We made a condition on ourselves that we will neither erect in our areas a monastery, church, or a sanctuary for a monk, nor restore any place of worship that needs restoration, nor use any of them for the purpose of enmity against Muslims. We will not prevent any Muslim from resting in our churches, whether they come by day or night, and we will open the doors of our houses of worship for the wayfarer and passerby. Those Muslims who come as guests will enjoy boarding and food for three days. We will not allow a spy against Muslims into our churches and homes or hide deceit or betrayal against Muslims. We will not teach our children the Quran. Interesting. We will not teach our children the Quran, publicize practices of shirk, invite anyone to shirk, or prevent any of our fellows from embracing Islam if they choose to do so. We will respect Muslims, move from the places we sit in if they choose to sit in them. We will not imitate their clothing, caps, turbans, sandals, hairstyles, speech, nicknames, and title names, or ride on saddles, hang swords on the shoulders, collect weapons of any kind, or carry these weapons. We will not encrypt our stamps in Arabic or sell liquor. We will have the front of our hair cut, wear our customary clothes wherever we are, wear belts around our waist, refrain from erecting crosses on the outside of our churches and demonstrating them and our books in public in Muslim fairways and markets. We will not sound the bells in our churches except discreetly or raise our voices while reciting our holy books inside our churches in the presence of Muslims, nor raise our voices with prayer at our funerals or light torches in funeral processions in the fairways of Muslims or their markets. We will not bury our dead next to Muslim dead or by servants who are captured by Muslims. We will be guides for Muslims and refrain from breaching their privacy in their homes. When I gave this document to Umar, he added, we will not beat any Muslim. 
these are the conditions that we set against ourselves and followers of our religion in return for safety and protection. If we break any of these promises that we set for your benefit against ourselves, then our dhimma, pro promise of protection, is broken and you are allowed to do with us what you are allowed of people of defiance and rebellion. So, short recap. Ibn Kathir here, Ibn Kathir explains how his well-known conditions that ensured the continued humiliation, degradation, and disgrace were placed on these Christians. These were not Christians, but he goes on to show, these were not Christians who said, we refuse to pay, we refuse all of this. He said, So let me, uh, let me just, before you... Yeah, they came to them and said, we want safety. They, they're saying, we want safety, we don't want to be fought, we're willing to pay the jizya, and even though they're willing to pay the jizya, all of these conditions, they can't repair a church, they can't do any of that stuff, they can't make their voices loud. You know it's a weak hadith, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ibn Kathir under the let bus me, again. Let me, let me, Ibn Kathir let me, let me, under the bus again. Hold on, hold Ibn on, Kathir hold on, quoted things on, that he regarded as reliable. Hold on, hold on. First thing, he did not say it was reliable. You lied on Ibn no, Kathir. No, 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 again. no. no, no You're no, saying no. Ibn Kathir is, is deliberately quoting hadith he regards as weak? Did, did, did you notice how he said ru'ya? Right? That, 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 that's, the, that's the weakness of his understanding and instead of asking he wants to come and prove everything I said wrong and then take it back. Let me just explain it. Ibn Kathir is a great book of tafsir. No mm -hmm. doubt we have respect for him. But you're great. No, I am not. I you have to be. I, I, you have I, to be if you're schooling him. Relax. Got you, bro. I did not even write a book of tafsir. So Ibn Kathir, Sheikh Uthman. I appreciate the compliment, David, but it is not true. Ibn Kathir, I'm a nobody. But there is a great scholar, Abu Saq al Khwaini, for example, in Ibn Jozi's. Are you paying attention, bro? I'm, I'm wondering, I had a phone here and that was not mine. Oh, uh, my first phone. So, you. Good. So, there are books written on the checking of the ahadith of Ibn Kathir. Okay. Ibn Kathir is not Sahih al Bukhari. Right? It is not a book of all authentic narration, it's a book of tafsir, right? Now, it is a very valued book of tafsir, no doubt to it. But as if you had watched my video about books of tafsir, I had explained even which prints show the weak narrations of Ibn Kathir. Oh, uh oh, David, what happened? You're still refuting. Now, uh, I'm, I'm there. Relax, relax, relax. I didn't refute Ibn Kathir. Those great scholars of hadith that went and checked those mm -hmm. hadith, they explain the weakness of those narrations. Ibn Kathir does not say anywhere in his tafsir that I'm only quoting Sahih Ahadith. He's giving you context, he's giving you what has been narrated, and the style, if you had learned, of a scholar like Ibn Kathir, when he sees a hadith to be Sahih, he will say it's authentically narrated. Sahih an nabi alayhi jayyid When he knows that there are weaknesses, he will say it has been reported, as he does here. Ru'ya, and it has been reported by the Ulema of Hadith. He did not authenticate the narration. If you had come and asked, I can show you the original checking, and I can show you those great scholars of Islam, not me, who showed the weakness in these narrations. There are many ahadith, Ibn Kathir quotes, and then mentions their weak himself. Right? Because you have not learned, you assume things again. Right? So this narration, and again, he says that's weak. He does not say it's weak, but in his style of reporting it, he points out that there is a weakness. That's why he doesn't say Sahan al Nabi, it has been authentic from Umar ibn Khattab. Rather, he says Ru'iya, it has been reported. Right? Now, if you like to get a takhrij of Ibn Kathir, and we have many, then you can go look at the narration, where it's originally from, and the weaknesses in its change. You're welcome. Not quite. Because I just said you're welcome. when Ibn Kathir is talking about jizya at the beginning of that at the beginning of that passage, sure. but you, you, you don't and understand you that. But it's a weak. You, you understood that part, right? It, and saying, you just went on that big tyrant on a weak hadith. I don't care whether I don't care whether it's weak or, just weak like or not. I care hadith. how Ibn Kathir is using it. So because you're saying that what Ibn, all Ibn Kathir is saying is this has been reported. That's it. No, no, no. Before that, all Ibn Kathir is saying, according to you. He's just saying that if someone refuses to pay the jizya, then that person will be humiliated and disgraced. Right? So, no, no, no. You're saying that's what he's saying. But then, in order to, in order to give, in order to back up what he's saying, he quotes this passage 
about Christians who were willingly, willingly entering into this contract were forced to be degraded in all kinds of ways. And if if they if they went against their contract in any way, then they would be treated differently beyond all the disgrace. So the only point is here, you can say weak, you can say strong. The context of Ibn Kathir's comments about Jizya are in that context. So to, so to claim that he's actually saying something that completely goes against all his background evidence that he's presenting is which is just what very, I said. very, very strange. Let me, let me explain this again. Okay. First thing, when Umar ibn Khattab, the same person you're talking about, mm -hmm. when he went into Jerusalem, you know the historic reports, right? Yeah. You know there were churches there, right? And they invited him to pray in a church, right? You don't know? You, you know, David does this when he doesn't have an answer a lot. I, I get your body language, it's cute. Yeah. All right, so when you go to the, the, the actual historic authentic narration, when Umar Radian went, to Jerusalem, and they were Christians, and they were Jews, who had their place to worship, did he not allow them to worship? Sure, he did. Did he, even when they asked him to come pray in the church, he told him, I would, but I'm afraid that Muslims might take this from you as a place of prayer because I prayed there, and I wanted to remain as your place of prayer. Is that not right? Nothing to do with what we're talking about. It is. I'm not talking, to, no, no, it is. I'm not talking it about Umar. I'm talking about Ibn Kathir. It is. So what I'm explaining is, Ibn Kathir, like any other Mufassir, he mentions an ayah, and he gives you that which has context, including authentic and including that which is weak. Right? And that is why, when we want to study how to implement fiqh, we don't go to Ibn Kathir, right? we go to books of fiqh, because you are stuck on one ayah. There are many ayah, there are many ahadith, and then those books of fiqh look at all of them, and they look at the different, and they say, okay, this has been reported from a weak chain, what we know from an authentic chain, this is what Amr Radian did, that's how we bring implementation. But the problem is, you don't want to know about how jazia really works, you just want to take jabs. All, go ahead, all I'm saying, so, period was Ibn Kathir okay, couldn't be saying what you were saying, otherwise he would not have backed he, it up with that. He, with that. he definitely was, and because you don't understand the style There's of no writing, way he was. There's zero percent chance. Have, have you studied Ibn Kathir? Um, you have a bunch not. of his commentaries. Studying and reading are not the same thing. I think you should know that. Right? Okay. Have you ever studied Ibn Kathir? Look, let, let, let me. Look, we, we, we get we get down to the exact same problem that keeps coming up over and over again. Namely, we read the Quran. Okay. Right. We read Surah 9. We get to 929. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. Sure. Hey, that sounds like it's calling on fighting people just because they don't believe in Allah. Sure. You would say no, because it really means fighting these particular people and so on, right? Sure. And so you have to go outside of that so you don't understand what it said. So fight those who do not believe in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book, so Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. That, if I'm reading that, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued, that sounds that sounds pretty clear. You fight people until you fight Jews and Christians until they pay the jizya. So, so if I'm standing here right now and all the Christians and Jews, should I just start going attacking them? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Well, why not? No. Why not? Because there's because what? a process. The ayah doesn't mention the process. Where's the process? It's, it's the, the, where's the process? So Read the ayah. Where's the process? Abrogation is the process. Oh, now he wants to jump into something else. No. You see no, 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 no. You're no, asking, no, you're no, asking no, how you're, you're, you you're, Your hypocrisy has just been no, exposed. Your hold hypocrisy on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And you, mentioned, you, mentioned, you mentioned the ayah, uh -huh. and when I told you there are other ayah, there are other ahadith, you, yeah, told, you told me, if I just read the ayah, and, and this is... But when I asked you the same question, if I just take that ayah as you're reading it, without looking at other ayat, without looking at fiqh, without looking at other hadith, then you would say that just jump out and start attacking these people. And then you were like, no, because there are other ayat. See, this is the hypocrisy. No, this is why we say you don't just take an ayah and then think you know what it means. We go to the people of knowledge, and that's in the Quran. If you don't know, yes, Ahmad Dikr, go to the people of knowledge. When I did that last time with the Bible, then you were like, no, 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 that interpretation, this, this McCarthy, I don't know McCarthy. This is a hypocrisy, David. Don't be a hypocrite. Be okay, real me, with me. No, hold on. Let me, hold on. Let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. 
Look, when we look at an ayah of Quran, mm -hmm. no doubt we look at those ayahs that are about commands, like those ayahs that, that are very evident, right? And there are those that definitely need the aid of tafsir, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that when you don't know, ask those scholars of knowledge. So if you want to know about jizya in reality and you don't just want to make videos, then come, I will mention to you all of the ayahs. All of the ahadith, all of the aqwal, what is sahih from da'if, and the concept will be very clear. But if you don't really want to know, you just want to make videos, you will take one ayah, and then you will say, well, this ayah says this to me, and then when I tell you, should I just implement it? You will say, no, 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 there's abrogation, right? This is a hypocrisy, don't do that. Bro. You want to know about jizya? I'll sit down and I'll explain it to you. All of the ayahs, all of the ahadith, tafsir and is a great book, but as I said, no doubt, and I said it the first time, and I said it again, and this is not throwing Ibn Kathir under the bus, rather saying that no book of tafsir is perfect. That's why we look at different books, we look at the tafrij of ahadith, and we go to those scholars who specialize in the implementation, the fiqh of it, and then we learn looking at all of the ayah. If you take the ayah by itself, then you would be telling me jump out and start attacking these people and taking jizya from them. But you know that that's not what it's about because there are other ayah, just like that. When you talk about jizya, this is one ayah. There are other ayah, there are other ahadith, there are other fiqh from it that then explain the concept. Okay. Now, go ahead. Back to my point. Back to my point. I'll add a little clarification. When we read, fight those who do not believe in Allah, it goes on until, until they pay the jizya with willing submission, feel themselves to do. That seems clear as far as the language. And in terms of qualifications, like, oh, it really means people who are fighting or something like that, then it seems like that should be included in. I agree that you do have to consider other verses, Thank but, you. But, that's, Thank you. but that's been, Thank you. But that's been if done. You, if you take this ayah by itself, then even what you said would be not clear. Meaning, if you just took this ayah out of context, you just took it out, sure. without looking at historic context, without looking at hadith, then you would say, jump out and start attacking these people. But this is why, when you look at jizya, and what it's paid for, and what are the services received by those who pay jizya, then the context of all of it becomes clear. So if you did that, that as but, well... But, but that is, that's the problem I'm talking about, right? Okay, okay so... So we we open we, so we, we read the Quran, right? Okay. And it's not arranged chronologically. Of course. But you have these verses like 929, 973, 9123, and so on, which call for fighting people because of their beliefs, right? And you read the context. So you, you, you read the, the you know the verses that come before, the verses that come after, trying to say, okay, what what is this? Is there some clarification here or something like that? You also have the greater context of the Quran. Which surah are we talking? About? I'm saying, but, Surah yeah. Ahzab, this would apply. Right? This would apply to. No, I mean, the ayat you are referencing are about Surah Ahzab, right? No, Surah Atawba. Surah Atawba is Surah Ahzab. Miskin. Ahzab. What's thirty? What's Surah thirty-three? Thirty-three. So it's called Tawba and Ahzab. God both names. Surah thirty-three. Yeah, yeah. Surah thirty-three. Is the same title as Surah nine? I've heard Ahzab and Atawba. Surah Al Ahzab. I've also had. I've also heard Barak for, for Surah Nine. Surah Al Tawba is also regarding the battles, right? We're talking about the battles that happened, right? Or wrong, right? I'm just saying. No, I'm, I'm talking about. Sorry. Uh, uh, I'll get you the name. But okay. So when you look at Surah Tawba, for example, okay. Surah Tawba was in the context of a battle. Yes or no? Um, well, if, if you go to Ibn Kathir, it's what led up to the battle. It's in the context about what happened in the battle, right? Yeah, they, it, it's, it's, they were calling for battle against the... If you, if you read Ibn Kathir's, uh, Ibn Kathir's Sirah, he says that command was given, and then at, as a result, Muhammad decided to march out and fight the Romans. Okay. But the Romans didn't even show up. You're talking about Tabu. Yeah. Okay. So, what we're saying is, when you're talking about a surah, uh -huh. you are looking at the context of what it's about. Right? I agree. Okay. Yeah, so, you have, so, so if you have a verse, right, the first thing is like the immediate context. Verse should sure. come before it or after and so on. Then you have the, the greater context of the book, right? Um, and then, in addition to that, you have historical context. Now, here, now here's the point, right? I read the verse, and it's, wow, that means what it sounds like it means. That's, 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 that's pretty bad, right? So... What do we have in the context? Well, the passage runs from 928 to, I think, 933 or something like that. Nothing there that would change the meaning. You have other verses in the Quran which talk more about fighting 
defensively. Right, we have other passages like that. Um, but when we look at how these are... What, what, okay, but you did agree that Tomba is about sort of the, I mean, about the battle of, of uh, uh, that, with the Romans, right? Tabu, Tabu, right? Yeah. What happened in Tabu? Uh, I think the Muslims went to fight and the Romans were there. But why did the Muslims go to fight? The, the, well, according to Ibn Kathir, because of that. According to Ibn Kathir, here, here's the context according to, according to Ibn Kathir in Assyria, right? So, the, in 928, 928 the, comment, the, the, comment, the commentary for that was, the Muslims were worried because Muhammad said that the, the pagans can no longer approach the sacred mosque, right? And it says that the Quraysh became concerned that this was going to hinder their profits from trade. We're going to, we're going to, we're, we're not going to be, we're not going to be earning the same money. People aren't, people aren't allowed to come here anymore. They might not like us anymore. They're worried that this is going to interfere with their, their profits from, from trade. You're talking about the That's not, that's not, that's not funny. Yeah, that's after country Mecca. So after they convert. So now, they're, 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 yeah, okay. yeah, they're worried. They're worried. They're worried that this is going to interfere with the profits from trade. So Allah says that He can still enrich them. And then the very next verse, how's Allah going to enrich us? Fight those who do not believe in Allah. Right? And you go through the entire path. You go through the entire passage. It's it's we're fighting these people to make money off of them. And at the end of it, at the end of it, at the end of it, he says, therefore, Muhammad marched right, so towards me, Tabuk to find the Romans. Let me explain that to you again. If you had actually looked at books of history in Tabuk, there were attacks on Muslims in Sham. You know about this, right? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Let's what see. can Let's I do with people? Let's see where is it at. Alright, so I, I have a video about the book. Okay. I give all your references in it. Books of history, authentication. Watch it. Okay. I'm, I'm, interested, I'm interested in that one. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send me that link. I'll send you a link. Okay. You didn't give me your number last time. If you, if you know the title, then if you know the title, then I'll show it to you on your phone today, so then you can watch. Alright? On top of that, you also know that there are authentic reports that there was a Roman army that was being prepared to attack Medina. Right? Mm, no. no. So this never, is the problem. Never this, seen this, that one. this is the problem. How this, have this, I never this, seen that one? No, it says there's an the army problem. in Syria. They're at war with the Persians. This is this is where, where is this talking? Where is this talking about? Where does it say they were planning to attack Medina? So if you like Ibn Khatib so much, get Bidaya wa Nihaya. Bidaya wa Nihaya. You never heard of Bidaya wa Nihaya? No. I mentioned it to you last time. If you're a good student, By the way, you're 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 my, you're, my students you're, 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 you're proving my objection with everything you said. No, no, I'm not. Let me explain it to you, right? Once again, when I looked at the verses from the Bible, mm -hmm. you told me you have to look at context, the old old covenant. I agree. I agree. Same Excellent. thing with the Quran. Excellent. So when I look at, for example, here, I'm just gonna give you an example, right? Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 11 if two men fight together and the wife of one of them draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the gentle yes. then you shall cut off her hand and your eyes shall not pity her so if I was to read up and down this verse in this chapter I do not find any context other than that that's what we should do, right? But then you will tell me this is the old covenant and the new covenant and then this writer said this and this, right? So you will take me to other than the chapter itself and the verses around it to explain it to you, right? But when I do the same for you about Quran, the hypocrisy comes out, right? Here, okay, show me here, why can I not do that today? In the, in, no, show, show it to me, here. Do you, do you remember? Okay. Do you do you remember because it's in a quote it's in the Quran. Okay. Where the Quran quotes a Jewish teaching. Surah 5 okay. verse 32. Okay. If anyone kills a man except for certain things, that is not it's a as if teaching. it's as if that he killed him. It's, it's in the Talmud. It's in the Talmud. If it's, it's a Jewish me, teaching. You can say let me, let me that is definitely it. a Jewish teaching. Let me let me explain it. In the Mishnah Sanhedrin chapter 4. Can I explain? Okay. Look, I let you speak, you let me speak, that's the way it works, right? Mm -hmm. When you say that that ruling can be found in Jewish scriptures, I have no problem with that. Yeah. But that is a ruling in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, that's not the point. That's not the point. The point was whether you're aware of it. In the Quran, that is not taken as a Jewish ruling. That is the hukum of Allah that Allah has ordained upon us. Okay? And we believe in that hukum. 
right? You trying to run away from answering the verse now. John, I'm, I'm willing to answer it. That's part of the, that was to explain it. Go ahead. But that was a misquote. That was not, that, that's the ayah in the Quran from Allah. Not a Jewish teaching. If they have the same teaching, they have the same Allah yeah. that they he even, to he, them, he, that's fine. He even, he, but he, he quotes it as for the children of Israel. So obviously they had it. And then we again, open up the Talmud and it's again, in there. Again, so that, that's what I explained to earlier. That these ayahs are applicable for us as well. Okay. No, so, no, 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 no. Okay. So None of that is the point. The point there was the reasoning for Jews behind that if you kill a man, it's, if you kill a man, it's as if you killed all mankind. The rabbis who are commenting on this are saying because you're killing all his future offspring. So they took that they took that very seriously as far as destroying someone's family line. So, hmm? woman and balls. Because if your husband and some other dude right. are fighting, okay. and you, you want to, you want husband. to, yeah, by crushing his testicles. I'm gonna say crushing, grabbing. But go ahead. You're making a. That's what the. Again, again. Uh, it's, it's okay. Saying, if see, I see, it's again. He's lying in the Bible. Not, he's I'm making. See, no, no, you are lying. Cause, cause listen, 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 listen. Everybody that has a Bible at home. No, no, no. You're you're caught today again, David. Again. No, 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 no. no. Everybody that has a Bible at home. If you do grab you, him by on. the testicles, you're you destroying his family line. No, not necessarily. You can't, if you, not Deuteronomy. necessarily. Could Deuteronomy. You Deuteron Could you? Hold on. Deuteronomy 25 11. Does it say crushing or seizing? If you're seizing. You are lying into if your you own Bible. If someone, Read it. Oh my goodness. If you reach down and grab someone yeah. by his testicles mean, in the middle of a bro, fight. Bro, you, 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 uh, you were in jail. You did some time. You probably kicked some dude in the nuts before. Doesn't mean you can't have kids anymore. This is a but very harsh fight. In a fight yeah, you're grabbing are, you, are you saying this is applicable today? No. Why not? I don't see that in this verse or in this chapter that it's not applicable. What? They, well, you, if you read over and over again, it said, and these are the regulations for the children of Israel. No, no, no. But today, the children of Israel, for example, if you're a Jewish, can you implement this as a Christian who's, who's a Jewish by, by race? I would, I would say, I mean, I would say as a Christian, you should not try to destroy someone's family line. So then you would not, would you implement this, yes or no? Wait, he's cutting, off, cutting off the head. No, 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 that's he's like, cut. Oh my goodness. Over, bro. That's look, listen, listen. If you if you read <laughs> this, this no, 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 no. If you read this, right? Want some water if you read this, there are there are they are dividing up the land and giving it as an inheritance, right? Look, these passages are about not screwing up someone's future look, descendants look, and inheritance. Look, I'm reading through this, huh? right? There are many rulings about if you curse your parents, you should be put to death. If a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring hey, them both hey, look out at this. the gate. Hold on, look at hold on. this. No, 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 no. Look, look what we got right here. Muhammad in the Bible. <laughs> sure. You have Sheikh Uthman here. See, let me give you all these mess. Let me give you all these messed up. No, 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 no. I think jump, it's amazing. Jump, 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 think, no, jump, no, no, jump. You jump to this. You this, jump to this. Uh, There's the same verse. But you're saying this should not be same implemented. Chapter. You're saying this should not be implemented, but you're defending, you're defending. Look at this. You're quoting Deuteronomy. Excellent. You're quoting Deuteronomy, the book you're attacking. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Genesis. I got Gent, you. Deuteronomy. I this got guy you. loves Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> Deuteronomy. Think? Hey, everyone. How do we know Muhammad's a prophet? Because he's in the Bible. What are you going to do here at the Dawah table? Attack the Bible. You can't trust Deuteronomy. We it's can't okay, trust Deuteronomy. How do we know Muhammad's a prophet? Because he's in Deuteronomy. And they don't get it. I'll wait this is amazing him. stuff. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll let All right. him speak. Go ahead and attack the Bible. I'll, I'll, I'll let, let you are defending. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Attack finish. the Bible that you're, you're defending done? and that your prophet you're defended done, bro? and believed it. Yeah, you're, you're done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are done. Yeah. Muhammad in the Bible. He, he thinks my name is Dr. Jamal Badu. <laughs> you're, you're distributing I, I, the tracks. You don't believe in them? I, listen, you don't believe in the I, tracks? I, I believe in them, but I didn't write it, so don't think that I wrote it. Now hold on, hold on. Let me let me explain this to you. Now. It's in Spanish. It's English. Brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam. Oh, look at him! Try to get away from this. No, you no, think no, I'm no, 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 no. I think it's I think I think it's amazing that you attack the book that you're using for dawah to defend your prophet. First thing, let me reference. All right. Okay. I personally have not researched enough on the reference to the Prophet Muhammad in the Bible to be making that claim myself. There are other scholars who have, and they have written on it, and this is for them, and I have no problem with it. That does not mean that we believe everything in the Bible is true. We do believe that some of the true message could be in here, and the Quran is our guide to it. 
So we're very clear. What I was trying to show you here. Biblical prophecies. You see that? I just want to check. You see that? Biblical that? prophecies. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the first passage you quote. Look at the first passage. Deuteronomy. You're about to attack Deuteronomy when Deuteronomy is the defense of your prophet. I am not. Go ahead. Attack Deuteronomy, the book where we find your prophet. Are you done speaking? See, like I asked you if this you're done. Awesome. I asked you if you're done. This is awesome. And he said he's done, but he won't let me speak. You notice that? Anybody else? I notice when Sheikh Uthman gets right. gets nervous, he starts. Uh, oh, you think I'm nervous? You better be nervous. <laughs> you better be nervous. How do we know Muhammad's a prophet? Because he's in the Bible. What book are we attacking? The Bible. I can tell you're nervous because I'm letting you speak. No, no, this is awesome. I wanted to, I wanted to draw attention. I got you. Because, I got you. because here's what I got here's what I found. You are done. No, here's what I. You see, you see, you won't hey, let me speak. No, no, no. They won't you, let you me can, speak. I'm trying to. No, no, you're not letting me speak. You're, you're going on and on, and every time I speak, you interrupt me and bring new things. You're not letting me speak because you know that you're done. What do you mean done? You're let about me, to attack the book that we are both required to believe. Let me speak. Okay. Good. Tell us about Deuteronomy. Can I speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So. When we talk about the Bible, and I've said this repeatedly, no doubt there's going to be some things in it, like for example, the commandment not to worship idols and things that we believe would be from God, and the judge there is the Quran. But no doubt from the Quran and from what we believe and from what you know in your heart, there are things that have been changed. False. So, hold on, let me finish now. Let me finish. So, for me to say that there is a reference to something that should bring your attention to in the Bible, for example, not worshipping idols and so on, does that mean that I take all of the Bible to be preserved? And I've explained this, but somehow you didn't get it. No, I'm not done. Hold on, hold on, put it away, bro. Contradicting your God and your prophet again, man. I'm going to speak, bro. I'm gonna you are speak. annihilating your God right now. I'm going to speak. Nobody can align my God. Now, the reason you're jumping here is because you're caught. Now, you're here, here in the verses, in the context that we're looking at, I'm not attacking you. All I ask you as a Christian is should we implement these today? They are in the Bible that if two men fight and a woman squeezes, seizes, not crushes, the balls of another, protecting her husband's life, her hand should be cut off and no eye should pity her. But you couldn't answer that to try to jump. I said, right? I said no, it should not but be. But why not? We're not under that law system. Yeah, yeah. But where did it say that in the verses? Have you read the rest of the Bible? Oh, Go exactly. to Jeremiah you, you see that now? About you see that now? When I was telling you about the ayah, hold on. When I was telling you about the ayah, you told me I read the verses before it and after it. And, and when I told you about other ayat, you were like, that's the problem. Is you keep telling me you got to look at other ayat and other hadith and other. I did not. But, I agree with you. But, I agree but with you. here, hold on. But here in the Bible, now you're just lying in the me. Bible, I am not. It's on tape. Don't worry about it, bro. That, that's a good thing about recording. Right? I said you so, go to the other verse. I said you have the the, 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 the close context and you have the wider context. You go to the entire book. And so, I said you got the historical so when context. I talked about so I said Jizya, there's all three contexts. So when I talked about Jizya, and I talked about the other ayah and the context from the ahadith and what Umar Khattab did. You told me that's a problem with Islam. It's on tape. It's on tape. You're like, because every time I read an then, ayah, then, then you tell me, look at other ayah. But either, when I tell you, either, when I tell you from the Bible, you misunderstood me, or I was not, or I was not clear enough. The point I was making, right? You take a verse. You've got a verse there. Verse sounds clear. Sure. Right? So you'd want to just like the Bible. Yeah. You'd want to right. examine the context, sure. examine what the meaning of that is. Excellent. You'd examine all of that if you're saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. is this something that applies today? Sure. Same thing with the Quran. Right. Okay. Same thing with the Quran. Excellent. Here's a verse. Is this something that applied to a particular people uh, or at all? That's times what I said. Time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've still never, I've still never gotten to the actual point. The actual okay. point is. So you have passages like, you know, to you be your religion, to me be my religion, sure. or um, passages about fighting in self-defense if someone is persecuting sure. Muslims and so on. And then you get to things like fight those who are not believing in Allah. Right? Sure. So you look at the context. You do, absolutely. The Excellent. problem is when you try when you try to arrange these, uh, you can go to uh, go to the go to the Darul Salam edition of Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay. Go all the way to the very end. Uh, so book nine. Okay. Book 9 of Sahih al-Bukhari, you have this essay on how to bring these together by, what's his name, Abu Humaid or Ibn Humaid, you heard of him? He was the, he was the, uh, he was the chief justice of Saudi Arabia and the imam at the Grand Mosque and so on. Okay. So, so, so it's you, Ibn you Humaid know, or Abu Humaid. You, you know Bukhari was like way, way before that time, right? Yeah, yeah, we're not talking okay. about. We're not talking Here's about. That. Tell you he, he, he makes an attempt to explain how these passages tie together. Which passage are you talking about? 
the passages of the Quran. Which like, one? Like, like, like 973, 9123. So this is not also, in Bukhari, then? This is probably so, uh, like a publisher's yeah, note. Yeah, 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 I, I promise you I'll make my point. I'm, 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 I'm making a point here. But you're, you're interrupting before I even hit the point. No, I just want to understand. I'll explain that. I'll explain that. So, he's taking all these passages, and he's, he's basically answering the question, how do we reconcile all these different claims? Because you have some claims where, hey, you be your religion, to you be your religion and to me be my religion. And these other passages, by those who not believe in Allah, right? Okay. And he puts down four, he arranges things in four stages, right? Okay. He says there's a stage where Muslims weren't supposed to fight back. They weren't even supposed to fight in self-defense, right? Okay. And then he says, but then, after the move to Medina, then they were permitted to fight in self-defense. If people are persecuting them and so on. So and like then he says, he says, well, I'm trying to understand, Badr, Medina. Um, don't know. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm, gu I'm guessing he would he would include Badr with that, right? No, no, no. He might include that in stage three. So stage and uh, stage you know, two. Very early on. Stage two, it's where Muslims are permitted to fight. Okay. Then stage three was where they had to fight. They're being attacked. They had to. They had to fight. Again, shows your ignorance because the first law of allowance to fight came in Badr. Okay. So the third stage is. Uh, fighting is obligatory, right? You have to, you have to fight in self-defense. And then the fourth stage he puts is offensive jihad, where you have to actually go out and fight and subjugate people, right? Okay. So th that's how he arranges those. That makes per that makes perfect sense to me. So here's, so, yeah, so here's the here's the issue, right? Here's the issue. We read the Quran. We read the Quran verse. That sounds like it's calling to fight, right? Okay. But guess what? You can have all kinds of things and all kinds of books that sound like they're calling to fight. Okay. You got to read them in context. So you have an actual uh, very respected scholar who's putting the essay. Who, who's I was made the chief justice of he was the chief, chief justice, justice of Saudi Arabia, eighties, um, nineties. <laughs> no, no, you're missing. What happened to Sheikh Ibn Baz? No, 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 dude, you're 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 you're, you're missing. You're you're you're, you're you're completely misunderstanding. You know who Sheikh Ibn Baz is? You're completely misunderstanding. You know who Sheikh Ibn Baz is? You're either deliberately, you're either L deliberately listen, misunderstanding. Listen, listen, listen. The chief justice of Saudi Arabia in the eighties and nineties, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz. Um, well, 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 we'll just look up Ibn Humayd after this. Sure. Okay. So, so let, let, let's look up. Alright, go for it. Let me finish, let me finish, finish one. Let me finish one. So, he says, how do we reconcile this? That's the conclusion that he comes to. Okay. That's the conclusion he comes to. Sure. I look at the same passages, that makes perfect, that makes perfect sense to me, right? Okay. And so, once you have that timeline, then there are basic there's basically one more question about how do you how you would apply that right? go for it and the question is you know once you've gone through these four stages are you just in stage four and then that's stage four forever so so fighting so, so why fighting you ask this? yeah no so i'm here to help no, you bro the other you said i'm your favorite shake but you're, you're the one who, you're by the way this is all our response you. to something you brought I got you. hold on let, let, me, just let me finish let I'm me almost done. Almost done. we're talking 30 seconds right so, one, do these four stages apply in such a way that once you've reached stage four, the other three stages do not apply? That's the question. No problem. Or is this contextual? In other words, Muslims who are in sort of a situation like Muhammad was in Mecca where he's totally outnumbered and therefore you're not fighting back, um, would be under under that, that sort of rule. I can see that, right? So that, as far as why you should not be running around implementing Surah 9 verse 29, I would interpret it because you're more in the situation of Muhammad in, in But you're not a scholar to interpret it, so I don't know why you're coming up with your interpretation. I'm giving you his interpretation. <laughs> no, no, you are, that, that's even, not what he said. Even, that's even not what he said. You are giving, David Wood, are interpreting when you shouldn't. Okay, and, and by the way, here's the entire point. Here, here's, here's I gave you more than 30 seconds. Here's the Keep overall, going. here's the big thing you respond. Here's the overall entire point. The point is, read the Quran, get all these verses. How do we reconcile them? Oh, here's a good way to reconcile them. Now it all makes sense. Now it all makes sense. But that doesn't look good. Fight those who do not believe in a lot. means that once you get in a certain, certain situation where you're the most powerful force, you violently subjugate people force them to pay jizya, impose conditions on them, and so on, or you keep fighting them until until they're not, you know, until they're gone or something like that, right? Okay. So that's what it looks like. And then even with the hadith, with Muhammad saying, uh, I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and so on, that all fits into that. And here's the point, here's the point. Even if that's completely wrong, even if that is completely wrong, to say, well, you're wrong about that, and therefore you need to go to all these different scholars. You gotta go to all these different scholars and consult all these different scholars to figure this out. 
You're talking about passages that are calling for violence against other people, calling for the violent subjugation of the world when you read them like that, right? And in order to figure out what Allah is really saying, you have to do all these, you know, decades of research. I did not say that. So the, pro the problem is, the problem is, which we always come back to, the Quran claims to be clear. The Quran claims to be clear. We open it. Well, we got some problem on understanding these verses. How do we reconcile them? We reconcile them in a way that constantly escalates the violence. And if that's wrong, how do you know what, what you're supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to, you're supposed to spend a lot of time going to all these scholars. But that means that it's just not clear. So we're not talking about reading the context or reading the entire book. You have to go outside of the book. And then when you get to the Hadith, then you have to go to the outside of the Hadith and you have to go to all these scholars. But that is a lot of work to understand who I'm supposed to kill and who I'm not supposed to kill. You know what I mean? Are you done? I'm done. You are done. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, you know that I'm not nervous because I let you speak respectfully. And you know you are nervous because you keep interrupting me. So let's see, let's see if you interrupt me now. Let's try it now, right? So, now, as I told you from the beginning, the Quran clearly tells you, if you don't know, yes, ask those who know. I didn't tell you, you have to go and do tens and years of research. All you got to do is go to somebody who is learned, who is scholarly, who has knowledge, and say, Shaykh, I read this ayah, I read this hadith, what is the context? How do we implement it? What verse is oh, that? Oh, oh, no, 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 just what verse is that? Just Allah Everybody knows the ayah. No, what, what, what verse is that? Look up the ayah. Uh, uh, I was thinking 21.7. Hang on. Okay, so, can I, see, can I finish now? I, I, just, I, just, I, just, I, just want, I just want to make sure that you're presenting that correctly. Yo, but you, can, you can go ahead. I'm just going to look it up. In the ayah, if you don't know, ask those who know. <laughs> we memorize the ayah. We don't really look at it. It's okay. Can I continue or is your nervousness um, not letting me speak? No, no, no. All right, I just, just want to so, make sure. So as I said earlier, and I continued saying, and you're still not listening, that the Quran gives you the solution from all this confusion, which is when you don't know something, you don't have to go and study yourself for 10 and 15, 20. I never said that. You put that in my mouth. What I said is you go to the people of knowledge and ask them. So not to Allah. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to do that. Right? So just like when I asked you about the Bible, you told me read the rest of the Bible and you told me that, that this, this covenant was explained by this and this by this and this scholar said this. In that way, when we as Muslims read an ayah, we don't assume from it without understanding the fiqh of it. Okay? That's why we go as students of knowledge to Shiu and they spend years, 20, 30, 40 years studying all the texts. But not every Muslim has to. Rather, when you go to the scholars, they, having dedicated that life, will explain to the answer in two minutes. If you, David Wood, had just come to me and said, explain to me jizya, then I could sit with you and give you all the different ayat, all the different ahadith, all the different aqwal, and in a few minutes you would have had your answers. But you didn't want the answer, you just wanted to make videos. If you wanted to know about fighting in Islam, we have whole abwab, whole chapters on jihad and qital, that bring all those verses and all those ahadith that explain what's nasiq, what's mansuq, what's early, what's later, right? So that's not an issue. What you're doing is instead of looking at the fiqh, the implementation, you're trying to go to these verses. And you are not looking at these verses randomly. You are getting these in order to attack, and then you're, then you're digging yeah, you from would, there. You wouldn't do that, right? I Shane? got you. I would not. You would not go to the Bible I and use not. verses to attack, right? Again, once again. By the way, so, the, hold on. Hold on no, I, I, I just want to know, is that the verse you were, you were quoting? With the uh, ask, ask the uh, ask those who uh, ask, ask those who possess the message. So, so the dicker, yeah. the dicker. That's the one you're quoting. Dicker in kuntum da taalamun. Yes. Well, this is talking. This is talking about. Isn't this talking about Christians and Jews? Uh, it is not. Before so, thee also the messengers. You see how he's trying to change no, the no, subject no, no, no. now. No, no, no. I think this can is I important. Can I finish what I'm saying and then I'll explain that to you? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. And this is the Yusuf Ali translation. Seriously. You, you, you use the Yusuf Ali translation? You don't like it? Yusuf Ali was Ismaili, you know that, right? I believe, I believe Haleli, I believe Haleli Khan actually says this is talking about Jews and Christians here. Or oh. he says the previous scriptures. All right, so get, get Haleli Khan. Get Hilali. I mean, here, look, look at Mustafa Khattab. What's the, bring it up here. 
21 yeah. 7. Whose phone is this? I have no idea. Go ahead, go ahead, finish your point. I can listen in. When you around. talked about the four stages that you're speaking about, which is not in Sahih al Bukhari itself, you're talking about somebody's commentary. I know. Right? It's how he's, reckons, he's making sense of all of this. Sure. So let me explain this to you. No doubt there was a time when fighting was forbidden. Right? And then a time came when fighting was allowed. Right? And then the time came that fighting was implemented against certain situations. But if you want to know whether these are stages that cannot go backwards and cannot reconcile between the stages, then the easy thing is to see how the Prophet dealt with it. Are there Christians and Jews and tribes that others that Rasulullah continue to have treaties with? Are there those that the Khulafa in the time of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman Ali anhum, continue to have trade with, for example, from Sham, and they were not being attacked, right? And are those, like in Tabuk, for example, where there were attacks, and what was the context of what was going on when they were attacked? What are the rules and regulations of Difa'a? For example, are you paying attention to what I'm saying? Or are you just paying attention? smirking away, right? In, in Difa'a, when, when, when you are attacked, for example, there is no need for an Amir, right? You defend yourself. But offensive jihad, one of the conditions is that you have to have an Amir, a Muslim leader that unites and brings the Muslims together for offensive jihad, right? So if you're in a time where you don't have such an Amir, you cannot initiate an offensive jihad, right? Even though you are past the fourth stage. Understand what I'm saying? For offensive jihad, there are different rulings, different amounts of time to give certain conditions that are done. And even in that time, there is the ability for the Khalifa to make pacts with people, peace treaties with people. Understand? If you look at Abbasiyah and Amawiyah and others, they made treaties with other... I'm not objecting, just, just clarification. Do, do you believe there can be another uh, another caliph now? Why not? Okay, just asking. How? Yeah, I don't want to sidetrack, but how, how would that happen? Would, like, would that be like scholars decide on one? I mean, not just scholars, but the Muslim Ummah would come and give bayah to a person and, and, and you know, as, as a consensus to come with one leadership. And we hope Allah will give us a Khalifa soon. Mm -hmm. okay. So, now do you understand about the four stages or you just didn't pay attention to that part? I understand completely. I just okay, disagree, and it wasn't it wasn't really my what, point. What did you disagree with? The point I'm the point I'm making. So, so the point I'm making. If if I were to go to, hmm, I'm really confused about these passages. Let me go. To, let me go to a scholar. Yeah, right. Go ahead. What if the scholar tells me, yeah, you have these four stages, and once sure. you reach stage four, then there's this. Sure. I go to a different scholar, and he says, what? That's nonsense. What are you talking about? Easy, right. easy answer for you. Just like a Christian. If yeah. I went to a Christian preacher and he told me that God made people in his image and that's why God was white and black people aren't a part of God and whatever, or, or, or the Christian pastor here mm -hmm. in California that was saying that the pulse shooting was a good thing and gays should be shot and so on. As a Christian, he may be a pastor, but you would say, does that come in line with what he's presenting from the biblical scriptures. So we as Muslims say, Zin bil kitab wa sun. Oh, they're listening now, bro. No, that's, when a scholar you, you, gives you... You just reached the problem. When a scholar gives you clear evidences from the Quran and Sahih Ahadith, then that's a scholar you should follow. When a scholar misinterprets Quran and you can see the evidence is being presented, but I'll give an example. Let's say a scholar tells you, light this guy on fire, right? And I tell you, David, don't do it, bro, because Rasulullah forbid punishing with the fire, right? So now, which scholar are you going to listen to? the one who punishes with fire. Right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So now, which scholar should you listen to? The one who can back it up. There you go. But that means it comes down to the sources. The of problem course. is when we're reading the sources. Of course, but the difference is the scholar understands the different sources, different ayat, and brings them together to explain it to you. You, David Wood, are just Googling one ayah, not understanding the rest, and trying to make your own interpretation. You're, you're acting like this is me. You're acting Isn't like this is me. Oh, we're about when I'm, I'm, so for, for example, in this, in this uh, Surah 21 verse 7, right? So you got Yusuf Ali. Before thee also, the apostles we sent were, were but men. Yeah, 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 I'm giving that as an example. Before thee also, the apostles we sent were but men, to whom we granted inspiration. If you realize this not, ask of those who possess the message. Then you read the Hillel Khan, and we sent not before you, O Muhammad, but men to whom we inspired. So ask the people of the reminder, yes. the scriptures, the Torah and the gospel, if yes. you do not know. Excellent. So here, so anyway, here, here's the, here's the point. This is the, 
This is Haleli and Khan. Haleli and Khan, and they're saying what this verse is talking about is asking asking Jews and Christians who have their book. Right? So if it's not, that's the point. If it's not what that means, who in the world am I supposed to listen to here? Let me, let me tell you. Okay, good. Is Hilali or Yusuf Ali your person you have asked? No, like it is not. Yeah, you, you, right just, you just Google, it, right? No, no not, I went. To, I went to their translation. That's right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you Google it. Right? You, you, you I didn't. I did not Google it at all. Okay, so you looked it up on the internet, right? Yeah. This that's is what not, it says in the Quran. Not, Pull it this up. is not asking a teacher. Mm -hmm. This is you again going in, looking at one verse, and mm -hmm. thinking you understand it, right? If you had asked mm -hmm. a scholar, then I would have told you, or, or I'm a student of knowledge, but a scholar would have told you that this ayah in the explanation from the Sahaba, from the Sahaba themselves who were there, explained that no doubt that the people of scripture had a knowledge about Rasulullah and that's why many of them became Muslim. But this ayah is applicable for us as well. And that's why Allah SWT used the word dhikr. You know what dhikr means? Reminder. Right, but what is dhikr in the Quran? Inna anzalnahu. Right there, it applied, it applied to the earlier scriptures. Right, but this is, this is so, the Qur'an making tafsir of the Qur'an, if you understand, right? The word dhikr has been used for the Qur'an itself. And for the Torah and the Gospel. Right, exactly. Okay. Why? Because part of the wahi. Mm -hmm. right? So under that, the Qur'an and what is preserved, mm -hmm. if we had, from the earlier scriptures, the hadith that is a part of the wahi, those scholars that are well versed in the dhikr, that they are the ones you should ask. So today, if you go to a scholar who is well versed in the Quran, in the Hadith, then this ayah is as applicable to us as it was to those that I was talking about earlier, that if you knew, then you should have looked at the scriptures which mentioned the Prophet and accepted it, right? But this ayah is not nasif or mansur. Right? This is where the muhkam, the ability to give hukam, continues. Now, if you ask a scholar today who is well versed in the dhikr, in the Quran, in the hadith, then they can give you references and explain the concept. No problem, it's very easy. But instead of going to that route, you want I want to look up this ayah and think that I know what it means. I want to look up this hadith, whether it's strong or weak, and think what it means. Why not just come and say, hey, I want to understand the concept of jizya from a fiqh perspective. So looking at all of the ayat, looking at all of the hadith, the research that we've already put in, sit down and explain it to you. But you don't want the answer, right? It doesn't work at all. Why does it not work? Because I come to you. Explain this to me. Sure. I get a different explanation from the cool. one that I get from Ibn Kathir. Ibn right? Kathir is not your teacher. You, you don't to, ask Ibn You look up, again. You look Ibn, up, no, no, hold on, hold on. Ibn Kathir. He wrote book books. Of he wrote books to get his book. I know. To get his know, views, but, right? But he was not explaining fiqh here. He was explaining an ayah and things that are related. It was not in the implementation. It's not a big book of fiqh. So instead of going to, you, you didn't go to any other Islamic scholar and ask this question. You went and tried to make your own interpretation based on Ibn Kathir or whatever else. Here, you, you I, I gave you the answer, right? I gave you the other ayat, uh -huh. other ahadith, but then you didn't like that. You want to continue to make your videos, right? But what because I'm saying is, why not come and ask? If you don't want to ask me, not me. Go ask another scholar. Sit down okay. with a scholar, a qualified Islamic scholar, and say, I want to understand the ahkam of qital in our time. What are the ahkam of qital? And a scholar will say, this ayah, this ayah, this ayah, this ayah, this ayah, this hadith, this hadith, this hadith. You don't have to do that research. That's what a scholar does. And with all of that, he'll give you a clear answer. No. But you don't want a clear answer. No. This is the same that's as not, that's exactly. Not, exactly. Yeah. No, 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 you don't no, want a clear answer. He goes, no, I don't want no. a clear answer. Let me get. Let me. Let me give you an example. Right. So you, take a, you take a verse like no compulsion. Truth it, comes out, bro. You take Truth a verse. You take like a verse like no compulsion in religion. Sure. You go to something like um, a scholar. Top, top court no, again. Again. No, top court in, in, instead of going to a scholar, you're going to Portabi. No, you don't understand. You can never read about Islam. You can't just read you the can, Quran, you read can. the Hadith, no, 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 read no, 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 no. the Sirah, just, read the commentaries. Just, You'll only be just, misled. Just you have to go like, to a person. You have to just like go to a person to tell I you. When I mentioned about the Bible, you told me you got to look at other verses and other that. You can't just read the Bible. You can. I agree, but you're, but you're not as, telling me to read other verses of the Quran. You're telling me I have to go to a person. But what I'm saying is. If you're willing to dedicate years and years of research, uh -huh. looking at all the different issues, I have no problem with that. But as a student, it shouldn't of take years and years of research hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> to figure out what hold this on. verse is saying. Hold on, it, listen. You're talking about a whole system of life. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a penal code. No, I'll, I'll be talking about a verse. No, 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 like, but, what is this but, verse no, saying? But again, the Quran is not just one verse, right? You're talking about something that has the rules and regulations of war. You're talking about those stories of the past, mm -hmm. the future, about prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. about dealing with your neighbors. All of that, no doubt, if you want to start implementing it, requires scholarly work. 
There are ulema from the time of the Prophet وسلم, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, there were the scholars amongst the Sahaba. And when a companion didn't understand the ayah, he would go to them. That's why Rasulullah said, take the Quran from Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Ubay, Ibn Ka'b, and others, right? So you would go to them. And then when they would ask them, they would explain it not from their own interpretation, from the other ayat of Quran, looking at context, looking at ahadith, they would give an answer. Today, for example, if you want to get a medical an question answered, you have no problem going to a doctor. You don't say, why can't I just pick up Gray's Anatomy and make my own insertion into my liver, right? But no doubt the hereafter and Islamic laws is something that's, that's complicated because you're implementing. If you just want to read for your own spiritual benefit, read the Quran all you want. But if you want to implement Islamic jihad laws or or, or there is no there is no hudud, scenario where I want to implement hudud, this stuff. Then then you need I want to, to understand go. it. Okay, if you want to understand it. Excellent. So when you want to understand the rules and regulations of jihad and jizya and things, you need to go to those who are experts in it. Just like if you want to understand legal system in America, you don't just pick up the constitution and go, to me, to be means this. No, you go to a legal expert to understand it. Just like the Bible. If you want to understand the Bible, we have people like McCarthy and others who write these. But you even told me, McCarthy, when I pointed out from McCarthy, you were like, that's just one guy. You threw him under the bus. But you would go to a Christian and ask, hey, is this applicable today or not? Is this a, a, a proverb? Is this a, a simile? Is this Jesus giving a direct ruling? Or is this something that it has a different meaning? Just like that. But you don't want to give the same courtesy to Islam because David Wood just wants to make videos. Wrong. <laughs> so, and I know we have to be wrapping up here, but we do, uh, yeah. just, to, just to explain my perspective here, right? So, back to what I mentioned earlier. And this is not to, to belabor this particular point, but it's if I were to look it up in, sure. in the tafsir of Qurtubi. Sure. So, I look up this verse. He gives, according to... This guy, this guy, and this guy, it means this. Exactly. According to this guy, this guy, and this guy, Perfect it means, something, it means something completely different. Thank you. According to this guy, this guy, and this guy, but he's quoting Muhammad's companions and all these other guys who are giving all of these different interpretations. Exactly. Right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. The idea you that you the idea, your right the idea that the further you go back in time, the less they know. To where, Muhammad's, to where Muhammad's companions are walking around, the verse means this, and someone else says, no, it doesn't mean that, it means this, and they're giving, they're giving completely different uh, interpretations, they're applying, complete, they're applying completely different hadiths to the situation, they're saying in the historical context, the historical context for this one was this one, the other one says, no, the historical context was that, if there's that much confusion back then, the idea, I'm just going to go to a scholar, all the scholar could possibly do is explain why there's so much confusion. Nope. Unless everyone back then, except one, one, one particular hey, I interpretation, got you. I got you. Go ahead. had it correct. And anyway, here's the point. Here's the point. That wasn't the point. I read a verse. <laughs> I read a verse of the Quran. I read a. I read a verse of the Quran. Huh? That sounds like this. Let me look it up. So I look it up in the commentaries, and I find that according to Muhammad's companions, they didn't agree on it. There's all these different interpretations. Right? So I go around, look at the, the relevant hadiths. And you get different interpretations of the verse. And your solution is, well, you have to go to a guy. The problem is, I could go to a guy who favors this guy in the commentaries more than this other guy. And so I'm still going to get, you're acting like if I go to scholars today, I'm going to get this consensus opinion on what this verse means. And I know enough to know that that is not true. You don't. I do. <laughs> let okay. me explain to you why. Okay, let me tell you now. Okay. All, all scholars you agree speaking? on 929? Are, 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 are you done speaking? Huh? No. Are you done speaking, bro? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Thank you for nailing your coffin. Let me explain. Most confusing religion me, ever. It, it is not. <laughs> most confusing, it sure is. It sure most is. confusing because of the lack of your ability to understand one simple concept. When no one could agree asked, on what any of these again, things you, mean, you, but you, it's you not see, confusing. You see, you see how he doesn't let me speak? Perfectly you clear. You see that? Uh, all your audience, let him speak. Perfectly clear. How I quietly listen to him because I'm not nervous, but this nervous guy, he keeps interrupting me because he knows he nailed his He's coffin. talking for five I minutes and not getting to his point. Well, I, because you're not letting me speak. Now, when we go back to Qurtabi, there are riwayat there that are authentic. There are riwayat there that are da'if, that are weak. So this is the job of scholars. Qurtabi, Tabari, Ibn Kathir, they collected all of this. Tabari, many of the riwayat he collected, he himself says this is weak. Ibn Kathir as well. These are jami'at tafasir. These are tafasir that put together the bigger picture of for scholars to go and look at research. 
But the problem is David Wood is too ignorant to understand. Well, I'm a horrible, evil let person. Me finish. Let me finish. Who gets you confused get, finish, when I get 10 different interpretations of the finish. same verse? Let me finish. When you look at 10 interpretations, the reason you're confused is because you don't have enough knowledge or enough sense to ask a scholar. The scholars, what they do, like my teacher, Sheikh Abdul Salam, he has a book of tafsir where he brings those interpretations and says, this narration is da'if, it's weak. This is why it's weak. Its chain is weak. Qurtabi mentions it, but it's da'if. Ibn Kathir mentions it, but it's da'if. At-Tabari mentions it, but it's weak. And then here is what is authentic. What you should have done is started with a simpler tafsir, like for example, tafsir Sa'di, which only gives one opinion. He does not give all these other opinions, which many of the I scholars... I want to know all the opinions. Excellent, but then you are not qualified enough to know the weak from the strong, right? Do you know al rijal You um, don't, because you don't. Do you? If you're saying that... Muhammad's companions again. You're, you're oh, saying wow, this. Right. Getting this you're, you're saying this again, this and wrong. I've explained this. That is not that the Muhammad's companions, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, are wrong. It's because many of those narrations are weak in their so chain. People were lying about them. They were not lying. Again, they weren't lying. There is a there is a They're difference. Not them up. There is a difference between kadab, uh -huh. a lie, and a daif hadith. Right? But when something is not authentically established, we don't rely upon them. You understand? It's not that the companion is lying. It's that people make mistakes. Mistakes, people like yourself. It's a lot of mistakes. It's, they're, they're people, you make more mistakes than them, so don't get carried away. You took. I, I don't you think took, so. I don't come you, up with ten different took, interpretations you, you, of a single you verse. Did. You took Ibn Abbas's uh, is narration of one ayah and plugged it somewhere else, right? That no, I didn't. That, Muslims did. No, no, no. So they made a mistake. Who, who made that website? You don't know. You're the one that told me you it's don't a Shia. Know. You told me it's a Shia website. Because of the name, right? And, and, and his conspiracy and, 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 theory is that it's Muslim, actually atheists. Listen, I, I didn't make that claim. It could be. Okay. But you're making a claim it's Muslims without knowing. This is your false assumption, right? But that ayah has not been explained by Ibn Abbas. You falsified that by misreading a website. Now, like that, there by are other trusting people these guys. by trusting somebody okay. you don't know, so, which is funny. Court to me anyway. is making the mistake of trusting all these different no, different commentators. No. But again, notice, once if again, no, if there's ten, if there's ten, if if court if court to me gives if court to me gives ten, if court to me gives ten interpretations, and these are all traced back to Muslim scholars, right? If he gives ten interpretations and nine of them are wrong, sure. That means but, but, that but, means that the false information and the mistakes are sure. massively outnumbering. Let me, let me explain this again. The truth. When there are ten narrations, there will not be ten different opinions. It will be one will say, for example, it's Maki, one will say it's Madri. One will say this is for this ayah, this is for this ayah, right? So it's not like there are ten different interpretations, but there may be weak narrations. Qurtabi, Tabari, these are research level books. These are not supposed to be just for people like yourself who don't know Sahih from Da'if that go and think they know. So Hold I can't on, go me, read those finish. books. I let can't read finish. the Quran because I misunderstand it. I can't read the Hadith. I'll just misunderstand once again, it. I can't read the commentaries because it's too advanced. Read the Quran all you want. Read the Hadith all you want. But when you don't know, ask those who know.